I'm ready. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we will talk about the, uh, we were talking about Matthew chapter 6, verse number 34. Okay, now what does the verse say? Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. tomorrow. And tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient is the trouble for today. You know, now, now our duty as the disciples of Jesus, okay, uh, and the disciples of Shofar ministry, okay, very, very important duty we all must have is what you got, uh, how we shape our mind, how we change our mind according to the Bible, hallelujah, how we change our mind, that, that should be our focus, how we change our mind according to the Bible. So, what uh, what is the mind? The mind is the citadel of the whole body. The mind is the fortress of the whole body. If the mind is healthy, the body is healthy. If the mind is healthy, the spirit is healthy. If the mind is healthy, the whole system that is in us, our body, soul, spirit, everything is healthy. Hallelujah. So remember, a healthy mind is the way to spiritual development. Praise the Lord. And spiritual progress. So, Jesus cares about the mind. Hallelujah. He cares a lot about the mind. Amen. Now, we will, uh, what do you call, uh, we will meditate on how, you know, the mind is very, very important. And how, hallelujah, how the mind helps us. Okay. How the mind helps us. And if we really take care about, Take care to keep our mind healthy. How we can stand, uh, you know, very perfect. Okay. So, number one, what does this word say? Do not worry about tomorrow. So, in your mind, the main thing that happens is the worry, the thought that comes about what will happen tomorrow. That will keep you down. That will keep you frustrated. That will keep you uh, depressed. What will happen about my tomorrow? But see, God is telling, Jesus is telling you very clearly, saying that only keep a small burden on your mind and the burden is the burden of thinking about today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are, you able to, are, are you able to relate? The burden is just thinking about today. Nothing else. Nothing more. Hallelujah. Uh, let me move it. I think I look much fairer. You know... <laughs> Okay, I think here are much better. Okay, yeah. So the burden that God wants you to have is just to worry about today. Praise the Lord. So only worry about today. Don't keep your thoughts about tomorrow because tomorrow is in the hand, is not in your hands. This is very important. You must understand. Tomorrow is not in your hands. Tomorrow is in the hands of God Almighty. Hallelujah. What will happen tomorrow? What will we eat tomorrow? What will we wear tomorrow? How will we go tomorrow? How will we, uh, what he called, um, uh, how we will we live tomorrow? You know, that is the constant worry of the mind which keeps us drained out. Okay. Now, what is Jesus telling in this verse? Can you please, uh, uh, very, uh, uh, what he called, what is the summary of Jesus speaking in this verse? Can you please uh, read it again and tell me, please. What is the summary of Jesus in this verse? Yeah. Oh, good. Navina is also joining. Yeah. So what is the summary of Jesus in this verse? Hi, Navina. Praise the Lord. Hi, Navina. Hi, hi. Praise the Lord. Good, good. Thanks for joining. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let, let us start. Uh, let us start it again. For Navina's sake, I am going to recap a little bit. Okay, what I'm saying. Okay, so now we were talking about keeping ourselves very spiritually healthy, and we are talking about keeping ourselves spiritually active. Hallelujah, and uh, spiritually strong. And uh, we read about Matthew chapter six, verse number thirty-four. And Matthew chapter six, verse number thirty-four. It says very clearly. Uh, uh, Rajesh, read it. Take no thought for tomorrow, for the tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient for the day is the trouble thereof. So, 
what is the what is jesus telling in matthew chapter 6 verse number 34 he says that you know that don't worry about tomorrow you know what will happen about tomorrow don't worry he's telling only burden your mind okay with the trouble that is for today don't worry about what is going to happen tomorrow because see i'll tell you the the whole health of man the whole health of man or woman anybody is in this mind if the mind is healthy the body is healthy if the mind is healthy every organ is healthy the spirit is healthy the soul is healthy everything is healthy so if you are keeping your mind healthy you will be a healthy person so what jesus is telling is you know that you just worry about today don't worry about tomorrow why because as christians the lord wants to remind us that tomorrow is in the hand of god not in the hand of us hallelujah it's not in hallelujah. your hand tomorrow is not in your hand tomorrow is in the hand of almighty god hallelujah therefore you know remember to give the tomorrow in god's hand and you be free and you be okay now let us read that verse again as i told you once again i am recapping for uh, 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 navina who joined okay the mind is the fortress of the body okay the mind is the center the center of the body okay and if the mind is kept happy the whole body the soul spirit is happy and you know constantly there are attacks on the mind okay so remember there are terrible attacks on the mind so remember to keep your mind always healthy and how to keep it healthy follow the principles of the bible hallelujah oh my god thomas also joined now i have to recap is it <laughs> okay so anyway uh, but you got i'll continue maybe as we continue you'll come to know about it hallelujah praise the lord thomas thomas praise the lord Pastor, can we just start with a small prayer because uh, yeah. it is a very important food to us. So yes. we need a mind alignment. So just uh, start Maybe. with the prayer. Yes. The prayer will. Okay, let's pray. Father, I pray, O oh God, for all those who are present on the Zoom. Pray that Father, they will hear the word. Pray that Father, they will uh, receive the word. Pray that Father, they will store the word. Pray that Father, they will develop on the word. And pray that Father, they will be transformed by the word. Thank you, Father. to you be the glory honor and praise in jesus name i pray amen. amen amen hallelujah so where i was now i want uh, uh what you call sister banu can you just uh, summarize all repeat all that i said just now yeah uh, because thomas is right, i think he's not able to speak but i think he's hearing us okay so can yeah. you summarize yeah yeah pastor was actually uh, saying like how we can practice certain disciplines and keep ourselves calm so that is the main uh, topic so um, if we see matthew 6:34 it says like therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things so here jesus is telling uh, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day is its own trouble so whatever we have trouble for this day that is enough just worry about that don't worry about tomorrow so why we should not worry about tomorrow because uh, we cannot control it even the today also even that also we cannot control it but but still so the thing is we don't need to worry uh, the the main thing is we need to keep why we should not worry because we need to keep ourselves uh in peaceful mind like uh, in in peace so our mind has to be in peace our mind has to be healthy so in order to have uh, a healthy mind uh we need to always we need to always uh, what to say change our mind with the word of god so when we renew our mind you know change our mind with the word of god don't see our situation the present situation but Uh, read a uh, read the word of god and change the mind and keep it healthy so if mind is healthy 
our total whole being will be healthy our soul body and spirit will everything will be healthy and when it is healthy so we will be healthy that is that's what pastor is saying and i think i missed little bit yeah Maybe. good excellent okay now uh, let us sure, read that words raise the lord come how are you i sorry i was uh, traveling and just now came home first So, I know, I know. That's why, right, that's why right. we totally understand you. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. I'm glad to see you, Tom. Okay, and uh, uh, what he called? Um, you came in my mind today morning. Okay, because uh, what he called? Uh, uh, why? Because uh, Virat Kohli it seems visited Tom's bakery. <laughs> so. when i was reading it in the news suddenly i thought about are thomas <laughs> are i have to talk to him without fail <laughs> thomas bakery is very famous in bangalore very famous a very big like karachi bakery in hyderabad very very famous bakery so i missed virat kohli had i been in bangalore i would have uh, gone to thomas bakery he was there eating uh, curry puffs it seems but nobody recognized him cha i thought is my favorite cricketer ready how okay wonderful praise the lord yeah so uh, you all believe in laughter you all believe in laughter yes you know you all must be laughing okay praise the lord okay this whole week i was laughing so much okay it was hurting my stomach in fact <laughs> okay i went i conducted a meeting yesterday and i tell you everybody were pleading to me stop pastor our stomach is pain <laughs> everybody started laughing so much okay okay so let me start off with the rajesh told me that we'll start with the word of prayer okay prayer is very good but uh, sometimes don't be very serious okay uh, let us start with a joke also praise the lord hallelujah uh, okay let me tell you a joke so there was a lady okay uh pastor amma and uh, there was a pastor okay there was a pastor amma okay now this uh, they both had lot of disagreements they both had lot of fightings and all that okay sorry and then uh, slowly what happened is uh, the pastor became very sick okay so when the pastor became sick uh, the pastor amma became very nice okay so she was okay the woman let's say the woman okay don't want past from her okay? the woman became very nice to her husband okay so she was serving her husband for full 10 days when she was sick okay because she knew in her mind that after she dies after he dies the property will come to her okay so she served very nicely her husband and now she thought her husband will definitely write the property to her when she dies and when she died so uh, then that husband died and the husband died okay she was for some one day she cried next day she was ready to take the property so she called the lawyer saying that please uh, settle the property and uh, so the lawyer read out the will of the husband in that will you know it was written saying that the husband has donated all the property to the charity to trust and not even one paisa to her okay so what she did is that she hurriedly took a auto and she was going somewhere so her family asked where are you running where are you running she said no no i am running to a very important place and immediately she went to the graveyard okay so she ran to the graveyard and there some people uh, the masons were working on the graveyard of her husband uh, the grave of her husband then she said wait 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 don't write now i i want to add something then you write so that masonry he said that madam i finished everything i wrote off everything uh, tell me what i what what i should write on your husband's grave so she told okay write like this okay rest in peace so he already wrote that okay so he said i already wrote so i said wait 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 I, you have to add something then he said until i come she added okay <laughs> okay <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so okay. so where i was 
Okay. So Thomas, uh, <laughs> where I was, uh, Badu, I lost track. Okay, so we were talking about the mind. We we're talking about the mind, how strong the mind is. Rajesh is. Rajesh is laughing so loudly. <laughs> that means very close to him, I think. Rajesh. Yeah. This joke is very close to me. <laughs> Closely connected with Rajesh. <laughs> Joke is closely connected with every man. <laughs> okay. I was about to say every gents in the chat room was laughing, including you, Pastor. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So, okay. So, let's return. So, See, now, I mean, the mind. I mean, the mind is the most important thing. Okay. Now, let us read that verse again and try to understand, try to meditate what Jesus is exactly talking about the mind. So Matthew 6, 34, once again, if when we read two, three times, now we will understand. Okay. We will understand how we can actually, uh, what he called, uh, be happy. Uh, how, what actually Jesus wants to speak to us about that verse. Yeah. Can you read it again? Yeah. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Yes. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Okay. Now, can you tell me exactly what is Jesus talking about the state of our mind? How we should keep it? How we should keep it? What is he talking about? Essentially, let me explain to you without wasting any time. You know, what is Jesus talking is that just worry about the present. Everybody say present. Present. Everybody say present. Present. In other words, Jesus is saying that live in the present. Don't worry about tomorrow. You know, tomorrow will take care of itself. Okay. Live in the present. Hallelujah. You know, everybody say this after me. Live in the present. Live in the present. Yes. Okay. Living in the present moment. In the present minute, in the present day, in the present hour. Hallelujah. Now, what is happening to most of us, I will tell you. I will explain to you. What is happening to our mind, most of us? Okay. The thing is, why our mind is stressed? Why our mind is depressed? Why our mind is tormented? It's because it thinks more about tomorrow. What will happen to me about tomorrow what will happen how will i take care of my tomorrow what will take place tomorrow will i be able to go on tomorrow you know my friends hallelujah i want to tell you tomorrow is not in your hands at all tomorrow is not in my hands at all hallelujah but the present is in your hands therefore make the best use of the present Hallelujah. And if you take care of the present, the tomorrow will shape beautifully before you because a healthy mind opens new avenues. It opens new doors. It opens new opportunities. It opens new... A healthy mind, not a depressed mind. A healthy mind actually, you know, thinks creatively. A healthy mind... I can go on and on if your mind is healthy. It, it will start thinking creatively. If your mind is healthy, it will start thinking, you know, in innovative ways. If your mind is healthy, it will have a lot of capacity in itself to work. Hallelujah. And the secret to keep your mind healthy is to live in the present. Hallelujah. Live in the present. That is what Jesus is talking about. And there is a technique in which we all can live in the present. There is a technique in which we all can live in the present. For example, okay, uh, today, now let me ask you, uh, where is Rajesh today? Just in the present moment. Where are you sitting, Rajesh? Where are you sitting now? Uh, you are muted. You are muted. At Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi site. Okay, which and something are you sitting? Uh, it's a camp room. A camp? It's a room. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. So just can you explain to me, you know, what is there around you? Like windows, like door, like out, out, outside. How is it around you? Yeah. Uh, around me is window, bed, okay. and my room partner, TV, tables. That's all. Okay. So now the present of Rajesh is that around me, there's a window, there's a table, there's a room partner, there's a TV, you know, and there are certain things around. Now, to live in the present, what Jesus is telling is that, you know, enjoy what is around you. What is around you, enjoy that. You know, relish that. Celebrate that. You know, take Take the, make the most use of that. Live in the present. So that means what is around you, you know, don't miss the opportunity of enjoying with it. Enjoy with the TV that is around you. Watch something healthy. Hallelujah. That will make your spirit to laugh. That will make your spirit to rejoice. That will make your spirit to be happy. Or there's a window around you. Open the window and watch the outside world and learn from the outside world what is going on. Look at the stars. Look at the sky. Look at the traffic. Look at the people there. Or if you are surrounded with a kitchen, have a cup of tea and relax yourself or make a soup or make something which you like. You, you got the point? Okay. Have Make the best use of those things which are around you. This is what Jesus is trying to tell you. To live in the present moment. You know, but your mind always is trying to run away from the present moment. And your mind is trying to live in the moment that it has never seen. Your mind is trying to live in, in tomorrow, which is unpredictable. Your mind is always trying to live in the tomorrow which you yourself don't know how it will turn out. And because you don't know, it's adding more stress to you. It's adding more stress to you. It's adding more stress to you. That's why I always tell, you know, I think if you, any of you attend, uh, I think uh, whenever you attend the Tuesday meetings, you will see me telling this word. You will see me very often. I love to go into the garden. You know, I love to walk in the garden where there's, you know, I've been doing this since many years, keeping my mind healthy. You know what I do? I just walk in the garden and I, I take out the photos of all the flowers, you know, so many flowers, photos are there in my mobile. I look at them. I smile at them. I, I talk to them. I talk to the creation that is around me. I enjoy that present moment. I enjoy that present day. And I don't want to spoil my present thinking about the tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thinking about the tomorrow. Because as Christians, as Christians, you know, we have a God who cares for us. We have a God who loves us. And who never leaves or abandons us, whatever be the situation. Now, let me explain to you a testimony. Okay. Let me explain to you a testimony. Okay. So, this month, I had a little, uh, you know, uh, my nature is to be very transparent about my life. The, you know, sometimes my family tells, you're, you're too transparent, too honest. But I say, I have to be, I am I am like that only. I Whatever is in my heart, I speak it out. So, you know. This month, I had some extra bills to pay. Okay. So, there was a bill of my uh, son's uh, second, he's studying his second year. So, he wanted a commerce tuition. So, there was a bill of commerce tuition, sir, who came home to teach him. Okay. And then there was a bill of uh, high electricity because we use the AC because it's very, very hot over here. So, th there was this bill. And... Uh, and uh, what you called, uh, there, is, there is a particular pastor, uh, what you called, uh, who helped me in my doctorate, okay? Uh, so, when I met him in Chennai, 
he narrated his problem and he told how uh, he works in that university where I did my doctorate. So he narrated his problem and said, uh, you know, like, like how he's struggling with that small salary and all. So I, in my heart, I thought I should do something to him. So I had to uh, give an offering to that pastor also, apart from all the other things. So all these things piling up, there was a bill. Okay. So, and I didn't have money in my account. Absolutely no money. So I was thinking, saying that, uh, Lord, what should I do? So I sat in this room. I was sitting in that chair there. I sat and I enjoyed that present moment. You know, I love. that's why I love to be alone. I love to be alone. You know, see, when you are alone, you are at yourself. And when you are at alone, you, you enjoy that moment. That's very, very important in life. Okay. Learn to enjoy and let your face always reflect that happiness, that joy. Hallelujah. That you enjoy when you are on your own. Okay. So I was sitting there alone and I was, I was praising and I was thinking and I was, you know, I was enjoying the present moment. Then I thought, let me watch something. So I opened and I watched the IPL match, which is going on. I laughed around. Then, uh, you know, then I watched a small uh, a clip of a small movie and uh, I laughed like very big. Okay. So my children will come and stand like that. What is there in that movie? You are laughing so much. They'll tell me. Okay. <laughs> so I said, why you have to laugh so much? You know, it's a normal joke. But I say, I enjoy. <laughs> I say, I enjoy the normal joke also. For me, everything is happiness. Hallelujah. So I, I enjoy like this. And then I sat there in the present. And I never even prayed to God about my tomorrow. But I had practical challenges. Okay. And suddenly the Lord spoke to me and he said that, don't worry. He said, I'm going, I'm sending you the providence. I'm sending you the money. So I was stunned. I, I, I was, uh, I was shocked. I was saying, uh, I stopped there for a moment and I smiled and said, Lord, thank you so much. He said, don't worry. You will get it very soon. Okay. In two, three days, you will get it. So don't worry. Rejoice. Don't have any tension. You see how God cares for us. Hallelujah. And you won't believe in two, three days, a uh, sister, like, you know, never, you know, I have, I've seen her giving to the ministry in such a manner. Okay. She sent a huge amount and I was able to pay off all the bills. Praise the Lord. Not a huge amount. I mean, whatever I needed. So she sent, I paid off. You see, now, how does this happen when your spirit is happy? When you live in the present moment, the tomorrow will take care of itself. Living in the, leaving everything in the hands of the tomorrow, in the hands of God and thanking God that he cares for your tomorrow. Hallelujah. Just thank God. Hallelujah. Can we thank God for a moment? So say, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Everybody say, you care about my tomorrow. You care, you about, care about my tomorrow. So, Live in the present moment, my dear friends. Take deep breaths. Like that. Enjoy the weather that is around you. Enjoy the environment that is around you. Appreciate the nature that is around you. Appreciate the uh, things that are around you. Everything is valuable around you. Enjoy your present moment. That's what God is Telling to you, saying, live in the today, no, not in the tomorrow. Sufficient is the trouble for today. You know, see, that is the beauty of God. See, now, when I look at Matthew 6, verse 34, in different angles, we can uh, understand Matthew 6, verse 34. And another way of understanding this verse is that God is telling, saying that He gave us the burden to carry only the trouble that is meant for today. Okay? Not for tomorrow. See, that is our lot. To be very honest. If you are worrying about your tomorrow, you are not a Christian. If you are worrying about your tomorrow, you are not understood the scriptures or the power of the scriptures. Hallelujah. You see, today, there is a burden for today 
sufficient is the trouble for today. That means God is telling to your mind, I have given a burden to, to worry about only the things that are on your list today. That's all. Now, let me ask. Let me ask. Thomas, what is the time now? What is the time now in your uh, uh, place? 9.03. 9.03. Okay. Now, what else is remaining for you till 12 o'clock in the night? What work is remaining for you to 12, till 12 o'clock in the night? Just after the meeting, prayer and sleep. Pastor, I am tired today. Okay. So, he has to have meal. You didn't have meals, Thomas? I, I had. I had, Pastor. Okay. So, you, you have to pray. And what else? What else you have to do? Sleep. Sleep. Okay. So, he has to pray and sleep. So, these are the two things that are remaining, which are the trouble for today. That's all what God wants him to keep in his mind. Because, see, the mind cannot carry weight, my dear friends. It cannot carry weight. The Bible is very clear. If you are thinking that you want to carry weight, it's your choice. Please do not carry weight on your mind. Please keep the mind free. Please keep the mind enjoyable. Please keep the mind happy. Hallelujah. So, the things that are burdened for today, only that, you know, he has to eat his meals, he has to sleep, so that means he has to switch off the light, or maybe uh, he has to uh, uh, see his bed sheet, where it is and all that, and uh, set right his pillow, and then he has to sleep. Uh, by the way, don't worry to switch off the gas. Every man is very particular about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? Okay. On internet, there is a handle. Okay. So there was a handle few years back. There was a handle called uh, switch off the gas handle. Right? <laughs> because it was the most. <laughs> so somebody wrote a, what he called, uh, the children will say there is a mime. Mime, huh? what is that? Meme. Okay. M-E-M-E. -E -E. Okay saying that switch off the gas okay so all men it seems before they sleep without fail they will tell their wives did you switch off the gas okay every man does that it seems so that's why don't switch up so remember to switch off the gas okay so this is the thing my dear friends hallelujah sufficient is the trouble for today just burden your mind with the things that are of today hallelujah remaining keep your mind very healthy Live in the present moment. Hallelujah. Enjoy the present moment. Hallelujah. Celebrate the present moment. You know, relax the heart and the mind. Hallelujah. You know, and you will stay healthy. Always you will stay healthy. Your whole body will stay healthy. Hallelujah. Now, let me tell you some more things. Some more things. Okay. A person came to me and uh, he said that he always hears voices in his head. Okay. Voices like, uh, uh, like, you know, what you called, uh, talk back or uh, shout on the wife or shout on the children like that. You know, some kind of voices like that or answer back, like very uh, violently answer back. So he says that when I hear those voices, I don't know, like somebody says something to him, he hears a voice saying that, talk back to him like that. So he answers the uh, the person uh, saying that, uh, hey, you did that, like that. He answers like that. So he was asking me a solution for that, saying that I I talk back, I answer back, I, uh, I have this bitter things about others, I have uh, the uh, people's past I have, and suddenly... When they come, a voice tells me they did like this in the past. So I talk, the, talk to them like that. So I don't know why are these voices coming in my head and how I should get deliverance from these voices in my head. This is the problem. Have you ever come across this uh, kind of situation? I think everybody hears this voice in our head. Correct? There is not one person who doesn't hear a voice in our head. You understand? Okay. Have you, are you familiar with what I'm saying? Do, do you, are you connecting with it? Have you heard voices in your head? 
yes yes pastor. yes yes fast some narratives going on some na- correct rajesh is telling some narrative is going on very good okay yes there is like somebody is talking to you always in the background of your head saying mm-hmm. that you know uh, speaking frustration speaking anger speaking bitterness speaking harshness remembering somebody's past remembering uh, to uh, or hurting them or talking rough with them accusing them those kind of voices keep coming to the people and they just without uh, without just uh, even thinking anything whatever they hear in their ears they will speak it out now if you are familiar this with this i want to ask you why does this voice from where is this voice who what is this voice what is the source of this voice why is it speaking from where does the voice come from can anybody reply to me subconscious mind okay i can agree to one extent the subconscious mind but some subco- subconscious mind always works when we sleep or uh, it's like a it's like a, a something which it's a subconscious mind is something which is there in the back which stores information but it doesn't speak back for me pastor actually think about uh, future fear fear about future based on that here narratives going coming in the mind clarity is coming okay anybody else can tell me why those voices come in the head why you keep hearing navina you can tell anything you know banu you can try telling actually we are starting that Because is coming from our it's mind it's from uh, no i think it is it from evil uh, oh. like uh, banu says it is from devil that is what most of the christians they say that it's from the devil but unfortunately it's not from the devil okay. <laughs> but okay. the, but there are lacks of christians who talk about that voice as the devil they are totally misled and they are totally misinformed they don't know what they are talking about that voice is not of the devil but demons also talk but it's very different i'm talking about that recurring voice always which is along with us like a shadow oh, okay yeah. i understand you yeah. the devil's voice will come and it will tell something and it will go that is different okay a once in a while it happens not regularly anybody last try before i tell you now my dear friends let me tell you what is that voice that voice is the voice of i want to tell you only if you tell me please pastor tell then only i'll do <laughs> yes pastor and at times please tell okay okay let me tell you okay sorry that voice is the voice of only rajesh told me please pastor uh, i'm trying to i'm trying to answer actually <laughs> that's what i'm thinking <laughs> it's a voice of <laughs> no pastor yeah. but the demons they create uh, negative thinking right they try to the yeah. Uh, yeah but uh, the past of the hurt or past of the you know uh, past exp you know our experience voice of the past experience with someone or something okay if we can't speak to them but it will uh, we we speak to ourselves that uh, you know indirect we are not speaking but we uh, we started speaking in our in our uh, conscious yeah not directly expressing that yeah. maybe now, let, let, let me tell you explain a situation let's say let's say a uh, uh, man and a wife is there uh, giving a model okay so uh, not that it has happened with everybody but just anybody uh, but i just giving a model a husband and a wife is there okay uh, now uh, let's say the wife uh, uh, did something with that irritated the husband some day maybe uh, what he called uh, uh, she didn't give him property or uh, when he wanted it maybe something like that understand okay so what the husband uh, he keeps quiet for that moment okay but after 3 4 days suddenly is sitting down okay and then uh, uh, she is uh, uh, trying to serve food 
suddenly the voice comes saying that she didn't give you the tea you understand so it reminds him then it says you know talk back to her very very you also shout on her scream on her and then the person screams that person shouts like that the voice that is constantly on the back of the mind okay that voice okay so i know demons can also stay and they will talk but that that voice is very different it uh, it is very very different okay so that that is also a voice that is also a tormenting voice but you can control that okay you can actually expel it you can bind it you can destroy it that's very easy but this is only very tough you got the point that's very easy to handle a demon is very easy to handle a demon a child of god only has to say in the name of jesus i rebuke you get away he will go away that's all so yeah I thomas have, you were saying something like i have a doubt like they they also create quarrel so much uh, disturbance Correct. in the family Correct. and all that so Correct. that is like it's not easy no pastor because yes. it's going on in families yes that, uh, that's what i'm saying no the okay. quarrels happen because there is somebody talking at the back of the mind tell this to her tell this to him tell this word to her speak that word to her hurt her abuse her yeah. remember her past Correct. or remember his past then past. Comes, comes comes and then the person tells now let me solve it without giving you all any kind of more uh, tension or suspension or intersection or bisection okay <laughs> or uh, some session okay now it all this happens is because of stress mm. you see that it's simple when you are stressed you know you see the mind talks back to you because it is stressed that so is the voice of mind the voice it's correct manu is right it's the voice of the mind which is actually stressed you know it is actually terribly stressed there is a chaos going on in the mind now now you visualize this visualize this when uh, something is going on when a quarrel is going on you know how can you visualize what is happening in the mind how can you visualize can you give a picture of how uh, what you call what is happening when a when a quarrel is going on and the man is speaking 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 woman is speaking speaking both are quarreling and they are speaking what is coming in their mind what is happening in their mind the picture of their mind is like a a, a sea which is in a storm you know when a sea is in a storm what happens is the waters they keep moving here there there here there is no pattern of the waves there is no pattern of the waters there is no particular pattern in which the waves will will travel you know because the storm is beating you know and that's why the thoughts in our mind like like what uh, thomas said the subconscious mind it's keeping it storing the thoughts so there is a storm going on in the mind and the mind is picking out because it's very stressed it's reacting it's reacting and when it's reacting it's throwing out things at you and what is, what is, what is it throwing out it's throwing out things that are relevant to that situation in which you are it is throwing out the things which are relevant that means it is reminding you about your husband or uh, like that you it is reminding you about your wife who hurt you exactly which is stored in the subconscious mind it's picking out that and that relevant thought it's throwing at you and you are reacting to it so the mind is stressed your mind is too much stressed it's chaotic inside there is a war inside and when there is a war going on inside when there is a storm going on inside there is no pattern it's beating here and there the waves are coming here and there and you are confused now look at this look at this have you ever come across people who are very calm who are very calm even in the midst of a quarrel 
who are very calm. Praise the Lord. You know, yes. now, now, now picture this. Picture this. On the night when Jesus Christ was betrayed, on the night, how chaotic it was. Can we recount the incidents that happened on the night Jesus was, was betrayed? On the night Jesus was betrayed, there were a lot of things happening haywire. Completely things were happening like erratic. That's the right word to use. Erratic. E-R-R-A-T-I-C. Erratic. What was happening? The disciples betrayed him. The disciples left him. You know, then what do you call Judas came and kissed him and handed him over to the Pharisees. The Pharisees came with soldiers. So many group of soldiers and they caught him. And they took him in the midnight at the center court. They called the high priest and they had a trial then and there. They produced two witnesses against him to speak. And those two witnesses came and spoke against him. And then what else happened? What else happened on that night? Hallelujah. Then that the next he was kept in jail on that night. And the next day morning he was produced before Pilate. And they they took away his clothes and they casted lots for his clothes. They mocked at him. They put a purple robe on him. They took him to Herod. They had a trial with Herod and they came back because Herod didn't find anything to him. And then Pilate and all the people shouting, saying that crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. All hell is going out outside. But what was Jesus' reaction? Have you ever observed how he remained calm in his mind. Yeah, he was silent. And he was calm. silent. The Bible says. Now, imagine you and me, how we will be. Now, now I'll, let me give an example, okay? Now, who I will pick up, okay? Let me pick up Thomas today. I'll give you an example about Thomas, okay? Now, imagine Thomas is going to uh, what you call Abu Dhabi uh, to, to Tukudi, okay? In the flight, direct flight. Sorry, Trichy, direct flight. And suddenly, you know, what do you call, everything is going erratic to Thomas. Okay, the clothes are not ironed. Okay, his, uh, his, uh, his clothes are not put in the bag. And then, what do you call, the taxi gets delayed and the taxi is not coming. Okay, on time, he's calling the taxi fellow. Where are you? Where are you? And then, you know, what do you call, uh, he's telling, uh, he's taking Thomas very lightly and very easily. And then, yeah, well, Thomas somehow puts all the clothes together and then he misses to put something in the suitcase. And then he sits in the taxi and the taxi driver is driving slowly and Thomas is getting late to the flight. Okay, now what is happening in Thomas' life? What is happening? There's a storm of activity going on in his mind. There's a storm. And Thomas is in, trapped in between. He doesn't know how, how to react. Now, the only way he reacts is that he reacts according to the situation. Then he looks at the, uh, the driver and he screams saying that you are late. You are doing this. You came late. You, it's because of you. And then he, he's blaming himself saying that I couldn't pack things on time. I couldn't put my clothes. He's blaming himself. He's blaming the taxi driver. It's not happening. I'm just giving an a illustration. And at the end of the day, when he reaches the flight, it's just one minute before he enters the flight and then he bangs into the flight and he sits down and now his whole, there's a full chaos going on. The voice is coming in his head. The voice of stress. The voice of overloading. Now go back to Matthew 6, 34. You know, you will see that word. Sufficient is the trouble for today. Today, yeah. Correct, no? Correct, yes. right? Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, Whatever. take care yeah. about tomorrow. Yes, yes. Sufficient what? trouble for today. Living Feeling in the present. Good. Tomorrow, we'll take care about tomorrow. Praise the Lord. You see that? You see, when we start coming out of that, you know, zone where we start to worry about the next moment, we will lose our peace. Yeah. 
now some of the part what you have narrated happened with me <laughs> i mean not the clothes or whatever but uh, while traveling back now it was so stressful yes when i came yeah so the challenge is always there now see i just give you one illustration about uh, just travel but there are thousands of illustrations that actually come to us on a daily basis children are asking this you know uh, what you got wife is telling something mother is telling something you know or uncle is telling something relative is telling something okay office is telling something boss is telling something but where what is your response towards that what from where are you going to respond you know now look at jesus now now look at the two illustrations i told one is the illustration of jesus christ who in spite of all the chaos there was peace in the mind another is the illustration of a man whose whose uh, uh, daily routine has gone haywire and he's lost the peace of his mind he's lost the peace of his mind now compare these two illustrations how can what can we learn from that what can we learn from that to keep our mind healthy what can we learn from that hallelujah that means we are stressed up we are stressed up you see the thing is you know when we are stressed up everything goes haywire everything you know the main uh, you want a healthy life i i began with that and i'm i'm sticking on to the point you want a healthy life please keep your mind healthy please keep your mind calm keep your mind relaxed keep your mind focused don't do a traffic jam don't create a traffic jam inside your own mind it cannot handle more than the burden for today it cannot handle more than the burden for today it's only programmed that's why god has said very clearly it's your mind is only programmed to carry the burden for only today not burden for tomorrow praise the lord it can only carry the burden for today just focus on the present moment live the present moment enjoy the present moment praise the lord you know don't compare yourself to others don't compare about what you don't have and what you have no 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 don't compare yourself okay however whatever you have you have that's it enjoy you know oh my god come on let, let us let us read this verse okay i like that verse a lot okay come on okay yeah one minute i just show show it to you just give me one second uh 1 timothy chapter 6 verse 6 okay now godliness with contentment is great gain Yes. godliness with contentment is great great now can can we uh, also read philippians chapter 4 verse number 11 6 6 philippians 4 uh, 11 uh, not not that i speak in regard to need for i have learned in whatever state i am to be content what does paul say i have learned in whatever state i am to be content hallelujah Amen. i have learned that means there is when this contentment in the heart and this contentment in the mind you know doesn't worry about tomorrow it doesn't worry about uh, what you have and what you don't have it doesn't worry about somebody insults you or somebody looks down on you it doesn't worry about who talks bad about you or who, who doesn't talk bad about you that's the mind of jesus okay he never worried about who's talking what is the uh, high priest uh, blaming him or uh, what is that man who's spitting on his face uh, he is ne- he's never worried about that one who's mocking him saying are you the king and you are you don't even have a proper dress you are bound and you are saying you are a king he is never bothered about it he is having full contentment in his heart and mind hallelujah you know now don't get me wrong okay it's good to be ambitious 
I'm not saying that you should not be ambitious. I am ambitious. You are ambitious. All of us are ambitious. But your ambition should, should not destroy your peace. Your ambition should actually build your peace. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It should not destroy your peace. Your ambition should be a positive force, not a negative force. Write it down. Your ambition and your desires should be a positive force, not a, not a negative force. When ambition becomes negative, it becomes destructive. When ambition becomes positive, it becomes it becomes powerful. Powerful. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. An ambition which becomes positive. Hallelujah. You know, ambitions that are negative have been the reason for witchcraft. Am- ambitions which are negative have been the reasons for sorcery. Ambitions which are negative have been the reasons for depression and mental health issues and challenges and destroyed the mental health of hundreds and thousands and lakhs of people. But ambitions that are positive, praise the Lord, amen, have built the people. For example, that lady okay, who was actually, she fell down from the train and her legs were cut off. When her legs were cut off, she fell down from the train because some thugs whom she uh, fought with, they threw her down from the train. She had, she challenged herself. I lost my legs, but I will climb the Mount Everest and I will create a record. And she won the Padma Bhushan Award by climbing the Mount Everest with prosthetic leg. That means false legs. She climbed the Mount Everest. In the tragedy of her life, she turned that dark face of her life into a positive ambition, a positive desire. She never blamed those people who pulled, pushed her from the train. She never blamed those people who, who threw her down from the train so that she will die. But she took it very positively the things that happened to her. And she said, this wrong thing has happened to me, but I will make it into a different story. And she turned it into a different story by climbing the Mount Everest all by herself and proving to the world that she is very ambitious, that she is very strong in her heart and mind. And she's not even bitter about what does never in her interview, you know, she ever explained saying that those are the people, and I want to take vengeance on those people who have pushed me from the train. No, if somebody has pushed you down, they have pushed you because God is challenging you for a better future. God is challenging you for a glorious future. God is challenging you for different accomplishments. Don't become negative when some people attack you and some people push you down. They pushed me also. But I rose up. Praise the Lord. Because I never looked back on those people. I never looked back. I never blamed those people. In fact, I kept looking forward. Hallelujah. Do you know something? When I came to Hyderabad, one day as I was sitting, I used to post everything on Facebook. Okay. And there were some people, you know, when they troubled me a lot. Okay. And of course, uh, uh, they were kind of different kind of people. Okay. Like selfishly, they used me and, you know, uh, some people, uh, what you call, worried me a lot in ministry, worried me a lot in ministry. In fact, uh, some people worried me in this extent where, uh, what you called, I had to humble myself down and tell, please come to church like that, although the fault was there. Things like that were very proud, pride-filled minds. I battled with those minds. But when I came to Hyderabad, okay, one thing came in my mind saying that, see, I want to keep my mind very healthy. So, you know what I did? I went to Facebook. I unfriended all of them. I removed them from my 
friends list i unfriended a, a set of people who were toxic to me and till date also whenever we go bangalore i tell my wife saying that see we are going in this area some toxic people will come before us but when you see them don't remember what they have done to us don't remember what they have done to us because whatever has happened it's happened for our good only can we all say amen 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 it's happened for our good hallelujah i agree with you pastor amen so turn that negative things that are happening to you into a positive force into a positive ambition become great desire big things no doubt but in a good way and every day enjoy yourself build yourself by positive hobbies positive things by the world is at your hands you can do anything and you can do if you enlarge your vision world will bow down to you amen praise the lord amen amen if you are in peace with yourself world will bow down with, before you hallelujah amen amen I, i want you to picture i want you to picture every all of you i want you to picture the whole world before you thousands and lakhs and millions come on millions of opportunities are there before you amen amen hallelujah everybody say i see i see come on come on everybody say i see i see yes i, I see. see i see yes you know see see millions of opportunities before you millions are coming up world is a big place millions of opportunities are there millions of chances are there millions of good things are there millions are there of good things millions of good people are there are you seeing them right now in your mind what are you seeing what are you seeing in your mind what are you seeing in your mind opportunities what else i said opportunities millions of opportunities good people good people, good people. millions are there who can show love to you amen amen Hallelujah. Everybody, everybody say millions are there who will show love to me millions are there who can show love to me world is a big place if you think it is big it is big it will become big to you it will become big to you you know uh, uh, in bangalore no uh, there were there were families who used to uh, pamper me so much you know like they used to love me like crazy okay when i came to hyderabad i was thinking lord you know i still miss those families who, who who really love me they love me so dearly but god raised up do you know that in hyderabad after few miracles happened in a few houses okay uh, so god raised up some people who began to love me like crazy oh my god i've been enjoying their love now in hyderabad praise god i am enjoying their love and uh, you know uh that sister husband okay uh, she is in the number one list her name is sister rani oh the way she loves us oh my god she loves me oh my god after her husband got healed with kidney you know my god she sees me as a man of god and the way she loves me oh my god i can't explain and now because of her testimony you know uh around uh, last uh, two days back i went to that to their house you know 12 people were surrounded me and i was sitting in the table they served me food and nobody was eating all were standing like this and i was sitting in the center and eating then i was telling you all take your plates and have with me he said no 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 he said you eat nicely you go then uh, what do you call it? then they were talking to me i felt so happy i felt so happy that god raised up a group for me who will love me like this everybody said that millions who will love me there are Amen. millions to love millions. yes if you yeah. see the world 
So that day also I preached to them like that. See, I, you know what I preached? I, I preached to them, when you go out, don't think in your mind, there are bad people around, there are bad people around. When you go out, look at the people and say, okay, good, all are good, all are good. This is a nice place. This is a nice world. These are, and you will see nice people will come to you. I never thought Sister, Na Sister Rani was a nice lady filled with love. Each time I go her, she will, uh, she will pack to me tomato pickle, mango pickle, bagara bacon, tomato curry, something or the other. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So, so, so you see that there are people who will love you, and you will can you will be connected to them if you think like that. If you think there are nice people around, if you think the world is filled with good people. Toxic people will not come close to you. According to your expectation, according to your mind, according to your thinking, according to your desire, according to your, the state of your heart, the, the kind of people, according to the state of your heart, will get connected to you and join with you. Hallelujah. Enjoy Amen. with them. Live the life with them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 6.34. God bless you. Let me pray for all of you. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord. We want to enjoy, Lord. We want to enjoy this life. We want to live in the present moment, O oh God. Lord, we want to, we know, Father, O oh God, that there are challenges, O oh God. But we know that you will take care of them, O oh God. Even as we relax in you like a child, O oh God, who never bothers because the child's father is always worried, oh God. That the worrying of the child's future is, is in the hands of the father, not the child. Therefore, the child is at peace, oh God. Lord, I pray that your children, oh God, whatever challenges they may be having, the challenges in their career, the challenges in their lives, the challenges, oh God, in their future, the challenges in their, oh Master God, personal lives, whatever, family life, or relatives or anything, I pray that the calmness will be with there with them. The peace that surpasses all understanding will guard their heart and mind. Let not their minds be chaotic, stressful, so that they will not hear those voices, O oh God. A calm mind, O oh God, has no voice to trouble, O oh God. A calm mind has only one thing in it, love and love and love. Amen. Therefore, always bless your children with a calm mind, a calm state of mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, we commit and we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, look, amen. disciples, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, disciples, okay? Uh, if, if I don't tell that, it will not be complete. Now, the way you need to keep your mind, picture it like this. It should be like a calm lake. You are sitting in a lake. Okay, and the lake is very calm. No movement in the lake. Very calm. Your mind must be like that and it's in your hands. It's in your hands. Sit, relax, close your mind. Let all the thoughts get away from your mind and make the mind to become like a calm lake. Calm lake. The waters are calm. And always remain in that state. Even there is war happening outside, be calm on the inside. See the war outside, but be, make your spirit so used to, to that calmness. Make your spirit so addicted to that calmness. Always your spirit should be like the calm waters. Have you ever gone to a lake which where you're sitting at the shore of the lake and it's very calm? The waters are blue and they're not, they not boiling, but they're very calm. The state of your mind should be like that because that was the state of the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, oh, he is our role. He is our role model. His life is our role model. Man. The way he lived in the calmness, the way that he enjoyed that peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Amen.
there should be peace in the mind and it should be at rest rest complete rest and this rest should be a continuous process so the moment you get stressed it will become chaotic don't allow it to become chaotic inside it must always be at rest practice it it doesn't come just like that it is not a one time thing this is a discipline you have to practice it every day to be calm you have to practice being calm on the inside you can do every work you can play cricket but you can be calm on the inside you can go to the airport but you can be calm on the inside you can you can board a taxi but you can be calm on the inside what matters is the peace that is inside peace that surpasses all understanding bible talks peace that surpasses all understanding that should be the lifestyle of a christian that should be the way of life of a christian peace that surpasses all understanding praise the lord hallelujah so you know if you are depressed if you are chaotic if you are if there is erratic behavior in your mind actually pastor yeah i'm listening yeah uh, banu it's fine you please continue i will talk later no no i am i'm just later it's okay i'm done i'm done i'm done no i just want to say like uh, this week was really stressful and um, in office something happened and uh, uh, because of some my colleague and uh, i was thinking why this guy is doing that and all and then it was okay fine but again yesterday something happened and uh, um i felt like like there is something you know attack is happening on my finances also like suddenly something happens and i need to uh do that so i was like uh, so stressed and it's really 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 the right word uh, god has uh, given really i was stressed and i didn't talk to my mom i didn't talk to call anyone i was like alone uh just uh, you know meditating on word hearing the message i was not at all thinking and uh, this really the right word god is speaking thank you thank you yes. so much it's the lord that's so nice that's so nice you know don't worry see i'll tell you sister banu okay nothing will happen to you nothing will happen to navina nothing will happen to thomas nothing will happen to rajesh don't worry one door closes Amen. remember i told you remember i told you remember i told you all don't worry rajesh you also don't worry banu you also don't worry amen look at the world in your mind thousands and millions of opportunities picture it before you picture it see the vision before you see thousands of opportunities thousands of good people thousands of people who will love you thousands of people who will bless you thousands of people who will encourage you see today you are depressed god sent me as an angel to encourage you praise the lord you know i think you are freest manu you are freest i think she is freest so you know don't worry amen, about amen amen i'm fine i'm fine <laughs> yeah fine so don't worry about anything you know don't worry about anything nothing will happen to any one of us we will not go dry we will not god will not allow us to suffer financial troubles it will be temporary like i told you i also had a challenge but i remained calm and i was in a state of calmness and peace and faith and positiveness and hope and relationship with the lord and god answered so remain in that stage remain in that calmness don't let your calmness which is precious your your soul must enjoy the calmness which god has promised which the bible says that it is a peace beyond all understanding to remain peaceful in 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 a world which is very erratic 
in a and chaotic is the style of a christian it's a way of life of a christian so don't worry all of you see the world there are big opportunities there are thousands of opportunities i i tell god saying god i know that if the food got stopped in the life of elijah because there was famine who brought the food who brought the food Yeah. What? Crows, 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 crows. The ravens, the ravens brought the food. You think God will, God, it, when it is, when it is fight for you, it's a time to see the supernatural. It's a time to God is doing something supernatural. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Always turn your trouble into triumph. always turn your trial into triumph always turn your negatives into positive force that's how you should be if there is fire that fire should carry you up that fire should not destroy you the fire should be like the fire that is inside a rocket that will you know propel you up amen amen high not a fire that will destroy you no not like that the fire should make you to should create combustion in you the fire should create positive combustion in you so that with that combustion you will soar in the skies amen hallelujah thousands of opportunities are there thousands of nations are there before pastor sumit to go amen amen hallelujah amen. thousands amen. are there amen. i see opportunities i see people who will love me across the world i see the world as a good place for me and i believe because of my heart the type i am that type people only will come close to me amen so i am joyful joyful people come close to me i i love to my nature is that i love to give joy and love and i love to receive love also both ways and such kind of people only come to me who will also receive my love but they don't stop there they will give their love also that's how i am that's how i attract people that's the kind of people i attract i love them they love me praise the lord that is my heart and that's how i attract what your heart is if your heart is calm you will attract the calm person in your life if your heart is faith filled you will attract a faith filled pastor to come and bless you if your heart is wicked it will attract wicked people to come to you so according to your heart you will see the people entering in your life so keep your mind and heart happy and enjoy and live a good life live in the present moment this is what jesus taught us matthew chapter 6 verse number 34 okay god bless you my prayers are with all our partners all those who are in this group are the partners of shofa and i want to tell you and i want to tell you shof i i never believe negative i never now i have a case to handle you know just imagine something negative is coming you all get disturbed but for me negatives come almost on a daily basis you know that now i have a case to handle very big case and they they came saying that this is this is very big problem i am i look at it and i smile and i say i'll solve it for you i told them i'll solve it not a big deal for me praise god hallelujah Hallelujah. Become like that. Become like that. When you see problems, no, don't uh, what he called. No, I tell people. I I told that family. I'll solve it for you. Don't worry. I'll solve it. Me and my God, we will solve it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Man, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. We will Pastor, solve it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor. You are touching my uh, very sensitive part. 
uh, through this message actually uh, you are showing another dimension about uh, matthew 634 is a uh, you are explaining revealing the hidden part of this verse really i i meditate this verse very long back but uh, today i got a one key point about uh, this verse uh, jesus explained 29th verse is past 30 32 about future for this in between he revealed one uh, revelation about 34 thanks pastor and uh, another one is uh, you are continue that uh, uh, testimony one who met one you met that uh, guy making some narrative in his mind then what you said to him how you handle that uh, con- how you yeah cancel so i person. i just told him saying that brother it's coming to you only because you are stressed learn to be calm and relaxed those voices will disappear i promise to you i gave him some exercises to relax the mind so like you know meditating the scripture focusing uh taking one verse you know uh, what you got just letting that verse in your mind go deep and forgetting removing all the worries i i will also tell you that exercise maybe some day later maybe we'll continue in that uh maybe tomorrow like that where uh, what you got you can actually uh, do that discipline of exercise so i suggested some exercises to him where he can relax the mind he can he should calm the mind inside okay he should forget about the past he should forget about the uh, future he should stop worrying about the future and he should uh, calm down his body his uh, posture uh, his uh, attitude uh, his anxiety levels all that he should bring it to relax to rest complete like that lake like that calm lake i i told him just be calm that's it and you will see that all the when a um, calm mind you know one thing i want to i wanted to end that without with, with telling you the truth a calm mind can has the capacity to get filled hallelujah once again i repeat okay a calm mind has the capacity to get as a capacity to get to feel feel so when you are calm you know when you reach a state of calmness let's say you are meditating you are sitting quietly in the garden you are sitting and again when you are sitting in the garden no don't again think about all uh, what you got what's happening in your life chaos and all that no just sit and relax and think about only one thing god or some words or something relax your mind and when you are relaxing your mind when your mind is totally switched off and relaxed fill your heart and mind with love fill it with love just feel that environment that's why i told you fill that heart and mind with love you know that's what i do i do exercise every day in this room i close my eyes and i keep laughing to myself i keep laughing and smiling to myself sometimes i do that uh, uh you know outside also then suddenly my younger son john will say see mummy daddy is laughing will tell then <laughs> everybody will 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 mock me okay why you are laughing nobody is around okay but they don't know something i'll be thinking and laughing so i'll be thinking and smiling so when you relax the mind when you uh, calm the mind fill it with joy fill it with love and then all bitterness will go away every bitterness will go away when you go out you will only be talking love that that is a secret of me see have you ever noticed me that uh, the way i talk the way i talk you know uh, uh, like you know just uh, you know call up some people whom i regularly talk you know like sister nancy is there i regularly talk with her like sister pavana is there in bangalore regularly you will you talk to them you know and say how pastor sumit talks then they will tell he will talk saying that nah thing will happen to you sister i tell you sister everything is going to be fine sister god is with you sister everything yes sister praise the lord don't worry then the way i pray have you ever noticed the way i pray i say lord lord bless this sister lord lord she is going through a hard time but you love her lord i create one environment where 
their heart no will become like fully they'll start crying only i'll create that environment why i i don't i don't deliberately create why because when i am meditating i fill my heart with so much of love and joy and suddenly this phone call comes it expresses like that you got the point so when you are filled with love and joy and when you go out suddenly somebody comes it will burst with that that same what you filled inside it will it will come out when you talk to the other people you'll tell praise the lord like that you know you'll say praise the lord okay like that you know so uh, you know the, uh, you know this uh, brother of alice he, his name is william he loves me so much you know uh, I'll, i'll i'll always tell him, hey william you are my friend i'll tell to his wife you know see your husband is my best friend now i'll tell okay they'll all feel that love pouring from my heart to them they can act, you can actually see their faces bright when they meet me you know why because in my quiet time of meditation i close my eyes i relax my mind bring it to rest and when it is in rest i fill it with love i fill it with love i fill it with joy overflowing love and joy and then i become joyful outside i become joyful when i talk on the phone i, I become joyful when i preach on the tuesday i i crack jokes everything happens because the the quiet time becomes very uh but, but a time where i get that feeling okay so remember that you know uh, you know i really this some of these christians whom i meet okay ah uh, they are not doing a good job yeah the way they go like that you know, like that if you go to form if they with their home you know long face like that they will sit like, <laughs> or something like that some expression blunt expression you know people who see them they will say i don't want christianity i don't want christ i don't want your gospel they will say oh, jesus christ to die for you know ayyo swami okay you know i should not say that but in my <laughs> okay i'll tell you something uh you know i am doing a course uh, okay in a bible college i i am in the third year now okay and there is a lecturer who comes okay uh, to teach he is a doctorate okay now the way this guy uh teaches the theology i feel like going and just punching him on the face and say get up <laughs> half of the time 500 students will be there okay and this guy you know i'll enact and show you how he will preach okay he will sit like this he's a fat guy okay sometimes being fat also is a problem okay so uh not very fat maybe little fat than me so he'll sit like this and then he'll close his eyes and half of the eyes will be sleeping half of the eyes will be open then he'll look like this and say contextual theology <clears throat> like that like <clears throat> like <that. laughs> this theology is linked to the dalits <clears throat> like <that. laughs> i feel like hey swami what you are man okay i said i don't want to learn theology from you i'll tell i want to run away from this you are in between that burp will come <laughs> oh my god i said was wow. what kind of christianity you are displaying so you see that my dear friends the christianity we display is a display of joy and overflowing love and a peaceful and a relaxed mind hallelujah peaceful and a relaxed mind so that's very very important for you be at calm be joyful be relaxed be full of love meditate tomorrow i will tell you how to meditate that okay so tomorrow after your prayer session uh maybe uh what do you call it? Uh, i will encourage everybody but i will not talk tomorrow uh because tomorrow's intercession ministry i have given it to banu okay and i want to see banu perform so uh very soon i will assign some other things to thomas and rajesh uh, and navina everybody okay but 
uh, the Ministry of Intercession, I have assigned it to Banu. So I will not be talking, I, but I will encourage the our uh, disciples to join the session. But after the session is over, we will have a short time of meditation. Okay, there I'll teach you how you can meditate and relax your heart and mind and exercises how you can do so that uh, you can be joyful, full of love and your speech full of grace, overflowing with grace and always displaying a bright countenance, uh, a countenance which is beaming, light. Light should come out of your countenance. Mm -hmm. So I will tell that tomorrow. Okay. Until then, thank you guys for being there. Thank you, Navina. We are praying. Let's pray all. Let's all of us will pray for Navina. No, let's pray. Father in heaven, we ask you to bless your daughter Navina, Lord. Even as Lord, there's a challenging time, O oh God. But we we are the people who look at the storms and we smile, O oh God. And we know that Father, this trial in her life will turn into triumph, O oh God. Amen. I believe, O oh God. O oh God, O oh Father, that she's gonna rise, O oh God, because the eagle, O oh God, she's a daughter of the Most High God. Amen. And, oh God, I believe that she's an eagle that flies because there's a lot of wind around. There's, there, the wind is, must God, it's, it's coming very fast and the eagle, it's enabling the eagle to fly high, oh God. Yes, oh God. The, when the wind is full of turmoil, it gives momentum to the eagle, oh God. And I believe she's the daughter of the great eagle, oh God. The great eagle, oh God. As the nation of America, oh God, they have their national symbol as eagle because, oh Lord, they are the nation that is built on God's, oh God, the God of the Bible, oh God. Therefore, I pray, oh God, we are the people, oh God, Father, who believe in the great Jehovah, who is the great eagle, oh God. And she is the daughter of the great eagle and she will also soar in this time, oh Master. Amen. Of Amen. trial, oh God, she will yes, soar sir. into triumph, oh God. Hallelujah. Yes, and Amen. we believe and we speak, oh God, promotions in our life. We speak, oh God, Amen. God favor in our life. We speak, yes, oh God, Father. growth Amen. in our life. We speak, oh God, Amen. Father, opportunities in our life. Amen. We speak, oh God, overflowing grace and Amen. Favor wherever she goes. We see the world is full of opportunities. We see the world is full of good people, oh God, for her, oh God, who will pamper her, who will love her, who will give her the opportunity that she needs and oh god who will bless and lift her up oh god more and more thank you father to you be the glory honor and praise in jesus mighty name we commit and we pray this prayer a beloved heavenly father amen amen amen, amen. yes praise so my dear amen. people be bright be beaming be joyful be happy be uh you know fun loving you know enjoy your present live in the present and uh, uh uh, do relaxation exercises. It will help you meditate when you are relaxed. Keep your mind calm. You know, whatever be the situation. God bless you. Okay. Thank you. Thomas. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you very much. I think it is very late for you. No problem. No problem. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye. Good night.